from Quattro and a truly desaturated, sodden England. We couldn't be any further away from the last video I filmed. If you caught that, you'll know we were in sunny Greece on turquoise waters surrounded by beautiful blue skies. By the way, if you liked that kind of content, let me know. I'm always interested in sharing the wider lifestyle of where the whole car scene takes us, but I'm not sure if you guys want me to stray too far away from cars, so let me know. Anyway, S1 Quattro, arguably we're in the right conditions for this car, as the name would suggest. Quattro, four-wheel drive, wet, road, grip, and this thing has bags of it, which brings me round to the topics we're going to discuss today. 10,000 miles, I'll be running you through that in a minute. I think when you've lived with a car for 10,000 miles, you're very qualified to discuss what it's like to live with this car day in, day out. So that's coming up. Replacing the S1 or tuning it. Haven't really covered too much tuning topics on this channel and I'll explain shortly as to why I think this thing might be better off being tuned than being replaced. And the other thing is a hot hatch tour. We discuss supercars and sports cars a lot on this channel and I think the smaller fun hot hatch stuff gets pushed aside too often. Doing it a disservice and I think we should cover these cars more often so we need to, to discuss hot hatch tour. But first things first, living with. The reason I'm filming this is the clock is about to tick over to 10,000 miles and it's time to discuss what it's truly like to spend a lot of time with the Audi S1 Quattro. Now, again, if you watch this channel regularly, you'll know that this isn't predominantly my car. It is my wife's. She uses it mostly day in, day out. Uh, however, recently she's got her hands on a new Range Rover, but we decided to keep this car because we love it. The reason being, it's I look at this as like a fun little mosquito for the road. Every time I approach it, first of all, it's bright yellow, so it puts a bit of a cheeky grin on your face because it's fun before you've even started the engine. But once you have started the engine, it's just a fun car. It's so small. I use it a lot of the time when I'm gonna nip into town. If I, if I know I'm gonna have to try and find a small car parking space or I'm gonna go in a multi-story car park. But on a more personal level, it's also the only manual car that I currently own and have regular access to, which means it's the only car that I can stay on top of the heel and toe technique. Now, in this day and age, everything's going automatic. It's going twin clutch gearbox, which I love. And for a performance car, you know, I still love having the, that incredibly sharp, fast response of twin clutch gearboxes but there's something beautiful and engaging about using a manual car to its full potential. Heel and toe, left foot braking, it's just, even when you don't have to, like I blip up and match the engine speed with the transmission speed, even when I'm pulling up to traffic lights or a T-junction. It's just that nice extra level of engagement that you can have with a manual car that you typically don't get out of an auto. So that's why I predominantly use this car. It's fun and it's manual and it, therefore it's a little bit of a engaging car to throw around country lanes. So what's it like though to actually use? Well, let's face it, the car's tiny. Uh, it's not the most practical. It does have four doors, but I actually use the back seats as a boot. Frequently I drop the seats just to make more space. The boot itself, you know, we typically picture up what it's like to go shopping in a car. And the boot is tiny, you're talking four shopping bags. So predominantly, it is just a fun car that adds a practical element to it. What I would say is that this car is great if you wanna have a lot of fun. Now, this brings me round to the tuning capabilities versus swapping this car for something different. Really, in my eyes, the only place that I might go after this is something like the RS3. Drove that car a few months ago, funnily enough, in weather exactly the same as this, horrible. It was very fast, had loads of grip, but it's approaching that area of practicality which I get out of the RS6, and I just don't need it. It's also not a manual, which is a different element that I'm getting from this car. So tuning, for me, appeals to me from two sides. The first side is, with this being a turbocharged car, it's Quattro, and the chassis on this is capable, I believe, of dealing with so much more. I don't think you would have to do too much to get, you know, maybe 330 brake. Every time I drive it, I wring its neck out because it doesn't have revs for days. It is much more reliant on its torque. Every time I drive it, I'm foot to the floor, plowing through gears, 
and I just can't help but think it could deal with so much more. Now, with it being a turbocharged car and an Audi block, it's very sturdy, it's very reliable, and I know there's lots of companies out there who are doing tuning kits for it. However, the company that's taking my eye is currently Abt, mainly because they are now an official partner of Audi, which means if we use their sort of entry level tuning stages, it would keep the warranty on this car. Very big deal, because if you ended up throwing a rod, over tuning it and it's out of warranty, I can imagine an engine swap in this is, I don't know, 15 grand or something like that. Not what you want at all. So warranty for me is important. Yeah, when I say this thing has a lot of grip, I'm just gonna find somewhere where I can drop cog in first gear. Nice straight road. It is soaking wet. First gear, revs. Nothing, not, and not even a, a light on the dash, nothing. It's got so much grip. And on the one hand, that's amazing. On the other hand, it could deal with a lot more. So I'm really contemplating tuning this car. I'm not big into tuning cars. So that's the other reason why I would like to really provide you guys some value into the journey and experience of tuning this car. I also think it'd look really cool and really squat if it was lowered just a little bit. Listen to me talk, I feel like a real boy racer. And that's the reason behind this car. It's just so much fun. It's a car that I don't mind tinkering with because it just doesn't take itself too seriously. And it's not like a crazy fast car that needs to be set up absolutely perfectly to set lap times. It's just a really great little road mosquito. And so here's something else. Now on this channel, we regularly feature supercars, sports cars, and the sort of exotic locations and experiences that those things bring. And that's great because the wider lifestyle of that is really interesting. It takes us to some very exotic locations. But as a result, I feel little cars like this have been neglected somewhat. And so I'm really keen. And if you follow me on Twitter, we've been having this chat of a hot hatch tour. Now, how cool would it be to get the other YouTubers involved? We'll all pick a hot hatch of choice and go on a road trip somewhere. We'd get you guys involved in it, talk about the route where it might go. It might be in England, but if the demand is there, it could definitely take us into Europe. I'd love to know what this thing is like on an Alpine Pass. I reckon you could wring its neck and it would be fun every step of the way. And that's something that's really important for me. One of the things I often say on this channel is how many smiles per gallon do you get out of a car? The belief and reasoning behind that is you don't have to have a super expensive hypercar or supercar or sports car to get smiles per gallon. If you get in it and it puts a smile on your face, you're winning. That car is a winner. I reckon this car on a mountain pass, you could wring its neck and you'd be smiling and grinning and giggling all day long. And also threading it down tight roads. A lot of those alpine roads, they get really tight. As I mentioned, this is the mosquito. We could go through all sorts of places with this and not have to breathe in. Sometimes when I'm in a supercar, I find myself like, breathe in because the roads get so tight. This thing. Grab down a drink. That sounds ridiculous, um, but you could just exploit a lot more of this car's potential in wet, muddy, autumn, winter British roads than you can with the Ferrari. The Ferrari in the right conditions, obviously, entirely different ball game. But when it's like this, I mean, you can't really see what I'm seeing here, but the roads are disgusting. We've got tractors coming in and out of fields right now. It's just that time of year. So there's mud all over the roads. The leaves are starting to fall off the trees and they're on the roads as well. As you can see, it's pouring down. Um, this thing laps it up and I don't feel bad being in this. In fact, I derive this really strange pleasure out of getting this thing quite filthy. <laughs> it just seems to lap it up. And because it doesn't have a crazy amount of power and it is quattro, just using it in conditions like this feels good. It's a nice place to be. The thing that's happening now is 
you know, England's gonna be like this for the next five months. That's no <laughs> exaggeration. We're gonna have the odd, beautiful, blue sky, frosty day. But in terms of summer, that's it. Forget about it, which means I'm actually gonna be spending more time in the RS6 and potentially even this than I am in the 458, which is mad. So, you know, cars like this, while they don't feature on the channel that often, they actually get used behind the scenes quite a lot. Talking of behind the scenes, another cool thing that we do with this quite a lot is use it as a tracking car. We stick GoPros on it and follow cars for filming, stick camera rigs in the boot. It's a good all-round car. I like it. I want to keep it. And I think tuning it is probably the best way to go. And that's an entirely different journey which I can film and bring to you guys too. So I'm excited about it. As always, guys, I want to know everything that you would like to see with this car. Stuff that's coming in future as well. Filming the super yacht in Greece really opened my eyes uh, to the wider lifestyle and culture content that you guys enjoy seeing. Um, so let me know in, in comments what else you would like. I'm aware that this channel is obviously very car focused and it will stay that way, but the wider lifestyle of it is something that really appeals to me and I'd like to share more of that. So let me know if you'd like to see more of that stuff. And let's talk about tuning and other options that I might not have thought about. Comments below, I always love hearing from you. As always guys, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. <laughs> Ciao!